What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at some of the more interesting operations that are defined in C++ 11 and 14 that handle more advanced template features. And we're also going to take a look at how to instrument our code so we can see a little bit more what's going on under the hood with the various operations that we're calling. And this particular example is going to get rid of the, the throw exception class, that troublesome, meddlesome class that threw exceptions, and replace it instead with the simple string class that we've looked at before. Now, we could also have that class throw exceptions, but hopefully by this point, you're going to take it on faith that by using the techniques I've talked about with respect to the strongly exception safe assignment, the copy assignment operator with the swap, which we use here, of course, as well, and a few other things that we can write code that's exception safe without having to litter our code with try catch blocks. So just take that on faith and believe me for the time being that that's correct, which it is. So here's the, here's the code now. Uh, it's very similar to the code we had before, except now we're not going to use the throw exception class as the parameter to stack, but instead we're going to use our simple string as the parameter to stack. So you can see we have S1 and S2, and I kept the number of elements low so you could see a little better what's going on under the hood. In fact, maybe I'll change that to one here. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and use the copy constructor. Maybe I'll uh, make that really small. <laughs> uh, we're gonna use the copy constructor and you can kind of see what it's gonna do. We're gonna use the move constructor. You can see what that's gonna do. Then we're gonna do pushes and pops. And then we're gonna do in place calls. And these in place calls are quite interesting. You'll see how they work as well. And then towards the bottom, we're going to do some assignment operations, both copy assignment and move assignment. And this will give you a pretty good idea of what's actually happening under the hood. So let me go ahead and run this code and we can see what it prints out. So like I said, I tried to keep the number of elements small so we could see what's happening here. And you can see that the first thing that happens is, um, we created three elements, and so we have three calls to simple string, which is the default constructor, and that comes from here. So we make three items. One went on stack S1, two went on stack S2. Then we're going to go ahead and begin the copy constructor. And what we're doing here is we're copying the contents of S2 over to a new stack called S3. And you can see here that for the copy constructor version, there's a lot of calls. And if we take a look at the copy constructor, we're going to see why that's the case in a second. Um, but you can see that we made some uh, default values. Then we use the assignment operator. Then we use the copy constructor, and so on and so forth. So if we go over here and, and look at stacks copy constructor, you can see what we're going to do here. Here's the copy constructor. Oh, I guess before I do that, let me show you the um, let me show you the constructor and how we're using a new C++ feature. So if you look over here at stack, you can see once again the implementation uses a unique pointer. So this is that holder technique that we talked about before. If you recall the previous example when we had the holder, in that particular case, we allocated an array of type T, and then we stuck it into the unique, unique pointer. And that works fine. But it's a good rule of thumb in modern C++ to try as much as possible to never allocate arrays or any objects uh, directly. We, instead, we'd like to use factory methods because they can ensure that things get cleaned up correctly in ways that are tedious and error prone for us to do it as programmers. So instead of saying new T, size as we had done previously. Instead, we're now going to use a C++14 factory method called make unique. And what it does is it, as the name implies, it's going to make a unique pointer and it's going to be a pointer to an array of size size. So that's how we're going to allocate this. So you're actually not going to see any places in this code, I don't think, where we say new T. Instead, we're going to make unique pointers wherever we need to make a pointer. So that's an even cleaner way of kind of consolidating the creation process of arrays in later versions of C++. And it's a nice addition to have. OK, so down here, you can see that the copy constructor goes ahead and makes us a, uh, an array, a unique pointer array that's as big as the right-hand side. 
And then we go ahead and we walk through this and we use the copy, sorry, we use the um, assignment operator, which in this case is the copy assignment operator, as you can see, to copy the contents from the right-hand side into the left-hand side. And I probably should do this to go to top, not to size. I bet that would be a little bit better. Let's see what happens when we do that. Because there's no sense in, in copying things that aren't, already, aren't even initialized. So that, that kind of cleaned up the code a little bit here. So the next thing you're going to do is what you see when we do the move constructor here, that doesn't have any overhead because we're just moving the contents of S2 and directly co-opting them and putting them into S4. So you can see that the move constructor doesn't really do anything, which is good. Now what I want to do is talk about the difference between push and in place. And so you're going to see here, we're going to have these instrumentation for doing push. And you can see what push is doing is it's making ourselves a new temporary simple string that's going to be initialized by a, a const care star. You can see that down here. And then the push operation here is actually calling this version. And this is the R value reference version. And so what it's doing is it's going ahead and it's using this in place call we're about to look at, but it's doing it on essentially a, a, a temporary that's been created. So this is, this is fairly efficient kind of thing to do. So what I'm talking about here is showing how we have different types of operations that get called that have different amounts of overhead. And in fact, just to make this even more interesting, let's go back to the main program. And we're going to have, we'll do push, this push. This is the one that does this push. And then we're also going to show how we can use the other push operations. So there's, it turns out that there's two push operations. And I want to show you the circumstances under which push operation gets called. So we're going to go ahead and change this to push. And this will be the const ref push. And the way we do this is like what I'm about to show you. We're going to go ahead and make ourselves a string. And let's call this simple string s. And then there. OK, so this push operation, if all goes well, we'll call this version. So let's go ahead and rerun the code now. And now you can see the different versions. So you can see that here's the push that pushes the const ref. And you can see that it's um, fairly expensive in this particular case. And then we have another version that uses the push that uses this version, which is cheaper. And then the third version we're going to have here is going to be the push that uses the, uh, whoops, oh, sorry. <laughs> I guess I'd better, uh, I'd better pop. Otherwise, I won't be able to show the differences between these things. There we go. All right, let's try running that. Otherwise, the stack is full, so it won't push anything. OK, so you can see here that when we do this push, where we make ourselves a, a temporary simple string, we use the version of push that is going to uh, be based on the const ref. This is going to end up using the copy assignment operator. And that's what's shown here. So this is the copy assignment operator. Conversely, when we do this push, this is going to end up using the move assignment operator. So if you go and look in here and look at this push, you can see it goes ahead and calls this in place call. And under the hood, that ends up using the, the uh, move assignment operator, which is cheaper and faster because it basically steals the data. And then down here, in this case, when we use in place, you'll see that the in place version down here is really efficient. Check this out. Look what in place does. In place goes ahead and actually creates the object in place and then just uses the, the move assignment operator to move it. So this is by far the cheapest of all the different ones. And let's go take a quick look at what in place does. And this will give us a, 
taste of some really cool template features that we'll talk about in more detail later. So in place is something that's known as uh, a variadic member template. <laughs> we'll talk more about member templates later. So member templates can only be non-virtual. And as you can see in this particular case, it takes what's called a variadic parameter list. And so that means it's just gonna bundle up the parameters that are passed to it, which in this case is that, that one parameter. And the implementation of this thing is to be forwarding that operation and using move semantics here. So what that's basically doing is it's creating the object in place, which is kind of why it's called in place. We'll see that there's other in place variants in other parts of STL. And then it's doing essentially the move assignment operator. So that is blazingly, blazingly fast. And this was a feature that was added in C++11. So if you aren't familiar with that type of capability, you probably haven't seen these methods before, but they're really super cool and they have very, very little overhead. So this is a great example of what Bjorn Struster was talking about the other day with respect to zero overhead abstraction. We're, we're getting rid of the overhead and making it really, really lean and mean, which is awesome. Okay. Then down here, you'll see that um, in the main program, we have the assignment operator. And because I've only got you know, very little elements in here, I just have one element basically. Um, the assignment operator, the copy assignment operator rather, is gonna basically copy one thing over. And then the move assignment operator is not gonna do uh, anything because it's just gonna take the contents and, and shove it into the, the left-hand side. So again, these things get a lot more efficient when you know how to use the appropriate move semantics and the appropriate uh, for, for both assignment and for, for uh, constructors. Okay, so that's basically showing you sort of the, the super optimized way of doing things here. Here's the code for this. The bulk of this code is pretty much identical to what we had with the previous version where we had things, for example, like the, the swap technique that we did here where you create a temporary and then you swap with the current elements. And you'll notice that the, the move assignment operator uh, is very similar to what we had before. We, we delete the left-hand side and then we move the contents over and then we set the right-hand side to be null. Those, those are all very similar to what we had before. Uh, the main difference, of course, is that in this case, we are using the, let's see, where did it go? Oh, sorry, I'm having simple string. I meant to be in stack. Um, as you can see down here, we are using the same technique as before with reset and release. The main difference here is we're using the unique pointer as opposed to saying new T of an array. So that, that way we have no places in this code, I don't think anywhere, where we're actually allocating anything with new. And that's a good thing. Uh, the more you can de-emphasize the use of new and delete explicitly, the more likely you are to have code that will be strongly exception safe and capable of being used in a wider variety of contexts. 